is on right now, you're watching Blow TV. <laughs> You had Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo. A couple boys around there used to call me Chad Hugo. Okay. You know, as, as, as a joke. And it's not, it's not some of them, but I used to love the next tune. We mixed it with the, the fizzle. That's where you get the fizzle, right? Okay, cool. So, like, when you were around age 13, 14, did you always know you wanted to be a DJ or you just wanted to be in music? Um, probably about 13, 14, I was more into sort of the production side, so making music. Um, from about, I think, 16, my sister put me deck. And then that's how I sort of got into DJing. And DJing just blew up for me and it kind of took over the whole producing side. From there, how did you find your feet into Afro Beats? Um, a friend introduced me to Afro Beats. Um, I was supposed to play his sister's party, graduation party. It was a Ghanaian, he's Ghanaian, and uh, he gave me a, a CD full of sort of like hip life and stuff. Um, and then I dropped it at a party and it went crazy. Like the reaction was crazy. And from then, I kind of, I kind of knew. Okay, and um, one of the things that probably uh, that's probably on the mind of all your fans, listeners, is when is your newest Afrobeats mix gonna come out? Um, is a well, it's a bit of a secret. Okay. But I'm gonna let you guys know first. It's gonna be sometime after the World Cup. So I'll you're not saying days. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you the date, but as soon as the World Cup finishes, keep your eyes peeled. Okay, cool. And last year, you opened up your mixtape with The Sounds of Burner Boy, and I'm guessing that's because of Like the Party song, which is probably one of the biggest hits of the summer. Mm -hmm. I know you're saying it's a secret and stuff, but when, what kind of song, what song would you want to open up with this year? Um, I'm going to open up with probably something really upbeat, because it's in the middle of the summer, um, and there's not long left to go, so something really upbeat, and uh, something to really get people engaged straight away, but I'm not going to let you know what song it is exactly. Okay. And what's the thought process that goes into making the ultimate Afrobeat mixtape? Mm -hmm. A lot of thought, man. A lot of thought. Um, I tried to think about what people want to hear, um, what, what music people don't know that they should know. Um, trying to stay ahead of the game in terms of predicting what's going to be hot. So just really finding like songs and also artists that haven't really been pushed. You know, really trying to get them on the mixtape or sounds or um, music from certain countries and stuff like that. Okay, and also, I remember when I was in uni, you had a big reputation. It was like, if you were going to be at that rave, you knew the Afrobeat section was going to be a really good, was going to be really good. How do you think the reception of the crowd has changed in Afrobeat from, since, from when you started DJing in raves and stuff to where it is now? Um, well, with the uni crowd, it, I think it's, it's still on the same level. Like, I'm, I'm going to raves now where Afrobeat is the main genre. Whereas when, um, let's say about all night, when we were dropping Afro beats, it was probably about half an hour, um, but people went absolutely crazy. Now we're just doing 45 minutes, an hour, and it's the main genre. It's not like before where it was funky house. So what artist would you say at the minute that's really generating a buzz in the Afro beat scene? Which artist right now? I mean, you always got your Wiz Kid, uh, Burner Boy as well. He's going to be in Ibiza, so everyone should go straight for that one. Um, who else? There's loads of people, man. Like, Castro's really coming back hard. And anyone that's not, like, West African, anyone? Um, I'd say Masiki Zolo. Okay. Like, Africa, so doing stuff really big now. Um, I love Uhuru stuff as well from, from South Africa. Um, so I think South African house. Mm. I mean, that's stuff we have to tell you. There's going to be a, you know, a bit more South African house on the Ultimate Afrobeats uh, mixtape as well. So watch out for that. Okay, and also, there's a lot of artists over here in the UK that are starting to, like, bring out Afrobeat tracks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a difference in the sound from from Afrobeat artists over here and Afrobeat artists from Af that are living in Africa? Yeah, most definitely. Um, probably the main one is the accent. You can pick up the accent quick. You can you can tell when someone's from here, um, that was born here and grew up here, compared to someone that was was born out there and stuff like that. That's the main one. Um, obviously, they've been doing it for years out in Africa, so the music's a bit more developed. Um, over here, we're catching up with the catch up with the kids. Okay, and for new artists trying to get radio plays and the attention of big DJs like yourself, what do you think the best thing for them to do? The best thing to do is I'd go down the route of creating my own tracks. 
um, you know, you have something what huge OBG did um, with videos on go viral videos where he went out and just made the song go viral. And it's pretty much overnight. And that song was big before DJs even had it. And he made it big. So DJs had to go and try and find that track and, and you know, really catch up. So they could be ahead of the game. And, and that's what you kind of have to do. You kind of have to create your own hype. Um, and DJs should just be put forward with that. Okay. And since this is um, one of the last couple of questions, since your country, Vietnam, is not in the World Cup, I'm guessing you're supporting Nigeria. <laughs> and um, what do you think of how the African teams have been playing in the World Cup, if you've um, been watching it? It's, it's a bit, like, you've got to go deep with the, with the football and stuff. Um, Ivory Coast probably have the, the strongest set of players, and they've just been knocked out. Nigeria um, are on and off. They're hot and cold. One match could be great. Mm. The other, like, matches you expect them to win, they don't win. So they're like that. Um, Ghana probably have the hardest group out of the lot. Um, and they're probably the most entertaining. Out of these three countries, Nigeria, Congo and Ghana, who do you think provides the best music at the moment? Um, right now, the music that, that's really sort of grabbing everyone's attention right now is obviously the Nigerian side because right now they have the perfect balance of Western and African influence. You know, a lot of it is in English now, whereas um, the Congolese side, everything's pretty much in French. So it does well in France, but it doesn't do so well over here. And the Ghanaian side um, is still very harsh in terms of, you know, their, their, their language as well. So a lot of it is in two still. Um, Nigeria side, a lot of the stuff I can understand now. Whereas when I first started playing sort of like African music, I was just really going off rhythm, the vibe and the beats mm -hmm. that is really giving me. Um, but now I can actually understand what they're saying. Whereas Nigerians, you know, they're doing a lot of you know, the English ones and English stuff. What's your last word for people that support you and the people that listen to your show and your mixtapes? Um, just a big thank you. You know, really and truly, when I, when I make my mixtapes and the show, it really is to um, for the listeners to promote the music. Yeah.